Another issue that I want to quickly mention is about uh, solidification for large ingots, such as when people cast uh, silicon ingots for polycrystalline silicon production or for large metal ingots. Typically, they would form so-called three regions. Okay, this is the schematic for the um, crystallization microstructure after solidification. In when when we pour hot liquid into a cold mold or cold wall, and what we see, okay, so we as you see we have the so-called chill zone, we have the column zone, and we have the equiaxed zone. Let's talk about each of these zones quickly. First about the chill zone. Chill means cold. It's the zone. Uh, when we have the surface equiaxed grains right at the interface between the crystalline solid which forms from solidification and the cold mode and the cold mode we have surface equiaxed grains we call it a chill zone because it's the material experience rapid cooling or large and delta T due to the mold wall is cold. You pour hot liquid into cold mold and quickly right at the interface it would cause large undercooling and because of the mold wall there will be a lot of surface defects and heterogeneous nucleation site. And because of we have large undercooling and a lot of um, heterogeneous nucleation sites they form very fine crystals okay at this interface and high nucleation rate and small grains in this so-called chill zone and inside chill zone when you go in towards inside we would have so-called uh, column zone the, of course the chill then the formation of these types of fine grain would quickly stop because when the liquid st solidifies it releases heat of the so-called latent heat and that would dramatically reach the temperature and the chill dome uh, kind of cease to occur and beyond that is what we ca people call column dome during this stage of the solidification the growth of the crystal is controlled by the heat extraction and the growth direction is typically along the heat transfer direction of heat transfer for example if the mold wall is here in this location the heat conduction is horizontal while at the bottom the heat conduction is vertical so you have different growth direction depending on the direction of heat conduction in this so-called column zone while each individual green grows longer following the planar growth as what we talked about before the last section in the center is called equiaxed zone in the center equiaxed zone in the center and uh, this zone is created by detached branches or the uh, dendrite starts to touch upon each other break off and form many uh, seeds for crystallization or for solidification and then they will grow but not so much uh, along any direction so we form many small greens um, in this equiaxed zone another thing that uh, we want to talk quickly about is control of the casting microstructure in order to control micro, the cast microstructure, the first thing that comes to people's mind is control of green size. Typically, you want to control want finer green size, which gives you higher hardness for typical metals, as well as a good, decent toughness. So high nucleation rate, from what we learned, would give to greater uh, nucleus density which means greater number of individuals uh, nucleus for subsequent growth and because of we have high number of those nucleus the final green size would be smaller 
In order to control the green size, one thing, one knob that you can turn is about the green cooling rate. Okay. Typically, the higher the cooling rate, we would have smaller green size because we would have a larger undercooling and a greater number of nucleation sites. It's also influenced by the casting condition, the cooling rate. A second uh, knob or parameter that we can uh, control is by addition of seeds. For example, through alloying, you can add into the melt some other alloying elements that those elements may become the preferred seeds for nucleation. You artificially create uh, the size for nucleation and increase the nuclear density and decrease the green size. A third one is about the mechanical vibration. During the solidification, you can use sonication or some other mechanism to vibrate the liquid melt and break off the small branches, dendrites, so that uh, we have smaller uni uh, equiaxed uh, nucleus for subsequent growth. And this would also help to reduce the green size. A different aspect is about controlling of the growth zones. For example, the heat transfer, as we mentioned, greatly impacted the growth of crystals um, during the casting process. So if you can control the cooling rate uh, to control the zone, typically the higher the cooling rate leads to greater the column zone. Okay, column zone, larger the column zone. And the cooling direction, if you are cooling from one direction, all the columns will be aligned along one direction. On the other hand, if you are cooling from different directions, then you would have multiple alignment of the zone, of the column growth. Okay. And of course, you can also add uh, foreign impurities. The foreign impurities would promote the equi-axed zones.